In Lesson 3-4, you will be dividing rational numbers, and you will divide positive and negative fractions using multiplicative inverses, and you'll also divide algebraic fractions. My guess is the only part that's new to you in this lesson will be the fact that some of the fractions are negative, and then also dividing algebraic fractions is a new way to look at this concept. The two vocabulary words for Lesson 3-4 are multiplicative inverses and reciprocals. Two numbers whose product is 1 are called multiplicative inverses or reciprocals. Please take a moment to look at the key concept in words. The product of a number and its multiplicative inverse is 1. Symbols for every number a over b where a and b are not equal to 0 there is exactly one number, it's reciprocal, b over a, such that a over b times b over a equals 1. I know that's not really clear, but if you read it a couple of times, it really is quite simple. At the bottom of the page, you have two examples for finding the multiplicative inverse. 7 16 is not that difficult. It's just 16 7 for its multiplicative inverse. But you do need to remember with mixed numbers that you're going to have to first change it to an improper fraction. Also, in order for something and its multiplicative inverse to equal 1, if the number is negative, then its multiplicative inverse also has to be negative because a negative times a negative will give us a positive. So for 1a at the bottom of the page, the multiplicative inverse of negative 7 ninths is negative 9 sevenths. For 1b, 2 times 12 is 24, 24 plus 1 is 25, 25 over 12 has a multiplicative inverse or reciprocal of 12 25ths. Please take a moment to review the key concept of dividing fractions. In words, to divide a fraction you multiply by its multiplicative inverse. And to demonstrate this concept, uh, I want you to take a moment to look at this example here, both algebraically and with the numbers here. And just consider that 4 ninths divided by 3 fifths could look many ways. And this is one way that it could look. It looks kind of silly because we have a two fractions inside of one fraction. But this is actually explaining why you do multiply by that multiplicative inverse. Because we have fractions in our fraction, let's get rid of that denominator 3 fifths by multiplying by the reciprocal. What happens is that the 3's and the 5's cancel out, leaving us 1 in the denominator, which is what we want. And then we know whatever we do to the denominator, we have to do to the numerator as well. So take for a second and just look at, I'm going to change colors here, 3 5 thirds divided by 5 thirds. Did we change the identity of the problem by multiplying by 1? No, because the identity property says that we can multiply by 1 and not change the identity. The reason we multiplied by 5 thirds over 5 thirds is so that we could get rid of that denominator there. So this, again, is really important to understand why you multiply by the reciprocal or the multiplicative inverse. It's not some made up rule where you try to remember, oh, keep, dot, flip. There is a mathematical reasoning behind that process. For example two, we are going to be dividing fractions. Take a second to look at the examples and then try 2a, b, c, and d on your own. If you wanna follow along with me and do the problems, that's fine. Otherwise, press pause, try the problems on your own, and then check your answer. 1 third divided by 7 fifteenths is the same thing as 1 third times 15 sevenths. I'm going to cancel here to make it a little bit easier to multiply. 1 times 5 is 5, and 1 times 7 is 7. 2a should be 5 sevenths. For 2b, 5 eighths divided by negative 3 fourths is the same thing as 5 eighths times negative 4 thirds. I can cancel 4 and 8. 5 times negative 1 is negative 5. 2 times 3 is 6 in the denominator. Remember, if you have a whole number to put that over 1, that might help you with finding the multiplicative inverse. For 2c, we have 3 fourths times 1 over 11, which is 
3 40 fourths. And for 2D, we have 12 over 1. So the reciprocal will be 1 12th. And we're going to multiply that by negative 6 sevenths. Going to cancel here and get negative 1 half. Again, if this is not a concept that you feel solid in, make sure you do what's necessary to get extra practice, whether that's doing extra IXL, asking me for more worksheets, or finding another way to make sure that you really understand this concept of dividing fractions. For example, three, we have division of mixed numbers. Again, this is probably a concept you understand, but we are throwing in the negative numbers, which shouldn't be a big change. We just have to remember to check our signs on our answer. For 3a at the bottom of the page, we have a positive divided by a negative, so right away I know my answer is going to be negative. Change to improper, 6 times 8 is 48, plus 3 is 51, 51 over 8. 4 times 4 is 16, 16 plus 1 is 17. The reciprocal of 17 over 4 is 4 over 17. Again, if you know the cancellation trick that helps with the multiplication, otherwise you're multiplying large numbers and having to reduce. But I do know that 17 is a factor of 51 and 4 is a factor of 8, so I can do some reducing there. For 2, sorry, for 3a, 3 times 1 is 3, 2 times 1 is 2. It's a negative because it's a positive divided by a negative. And negative 3 halves is the same thing as negative 1 and 1 half. For 3b, we have a negative divided by a negative, so I know my answer is going to be positive. 6 times 5 is 30. 30 plus 4 is 34 over 5. 2 times 5 is 10. 10 plus 2 is 12. The reciprocal of 12 over 5 is 5 over 12. The 5s cancel out and we are left with 34 over 12. That can be reduced. 2 goes into 12 6 times. 2 goes into 34 17 times. 17 6 reduces to 2 and 5 6. Positive 2 and 5 6 for the answer. Take a moment after doing these problems to recall all of the steps needed to divide improper fractions. Add on the step of looking for the signs to make sure you have the right symbol at the end. Dividing fractions can be used to solve situations like example four. Tessa feeds her dog Roscoe three and a quarter cups of dog food per day and if she buys a bag of food that contains 165 cups, how many days will the bag of food last? The division problem is set up here for you. Remember that 165 gets put over 1, 3 and 3 quarters gets changed to an improper fraction. The reciprocal takes place, then multiplication and canceling to find the answer. For the got it problem, number 4, a cereal box contains 15 and 3 fifths ounces and one bowl holds 2 and 2 fifths ounces. How many bowls of cereal are in one box? 15 and 3 fifths gets changed to an improper fraction. 15 times 5 is 75. 75 plus 3 is 78. 78 over 5 divided by 2 times 5 is 10. 10 plus 2 is 12. 12 over 5. The reciprocal of that is 5 over 12. The 5s can cancel out. We can also reduce 78 and 12. 12 by half, that's 6 and 39. 3 is a factor of both of those. 3 goes into 6 twice, and 3 goes into 39 13 times. 13 times 1 is 13 over 2, which is 6 and 1 half. So about 6 and a half bowls of cereal are in one box. For example 5, you're going to be dividing algebraic expressions. So we'll add a level of difficulty into this process by putting in some variables. Don't let that scare you. As long as you understand the multiplicative inverse or reciprocal, you should be okay. So we have a division problem right here, and we're going to do the reciprocal of the second fraction and change to multiplication. 
Because there are no addition or subtraction signs involved here, we can cancel as much as we want. We have an A and a B here that we can cross cancel with the A and the B in the numerator of the second fraction. We also have a 5 that can be reduced here with a 15. And then notice what we have left in the numerator is a 1 and a C. That's where the C came from. In the denominator, we have a 3 and a 3, which is where the 9 came from. Let's take a look at the got it problems to make sure you understand. 5AB over 6 stays. This is going to turn into a multiplication sign. And 10B over 7 is going to be 7 over 10B. If I look at the 6 and the 7, there's nothing I can cancel out there. But there is a B and a B that I can cross off. I also have a 5 that goes into 5 once and a 5 that goes into 10 twice. What I'm left with in the numerator, I have 1 times A times 7, which is 7A. In the denominator, I have 6 times 2, which is 12. The answer to 5A is 7A over 12. In 1B, I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal, so m over 8 becomes 8 over m. I see an m that I can cancel out here and here. 4 goes into 4 once, 4 goes into 8 twice. n times 2 is 2n. In the denominator, 1 times 1 is 1. So we can simplify that answer just to be 2n. If you're not 100% on example 5, don't worry. Dividing algebraic fractions does amp up the difficulty just a little bit. But by the time you do your practice problems on your homework, and we do a few together in class, I think you'll feel more secure in this skill. If not, let me know, and we'll find some more practice.